Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back. I'm going to be doing my latest DVD update for everybody today. Um, I got a good amount of stuff here. Um, not as much as the last one or not as much as usual because again, not working right now so I got to watch my spending. But I did get probably half and half, half movies, half TV shows. So let's just go ahead and uh, get started. First up, I did get only one wrestling DVD this time. So I figured instead of just doing, uh, like I said, a, a very short wrestling update, I'll just include them in the regular updates. And I picked up WWF Rebellion 2001. I actually used to have this one on uh, VHS, but I got rid of it long ago when I was getting rid of a lot of my wrestling stuff. But I now have it uh, back again in the collection, this time on DVD, which is better. Um, this was one of the UK pay-per-views they did. And this was right before uh, Survivor Series 2001 when the Alliance ended, which was uh, probably, if not the worst, one of the worst wrestling storylines, in my opinion. Um, but there is good matches on here. You have Stone Cold versus The Rock, uh, Kurt Angle versus Chris Jericho. The APA versus the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys. And Edge and Christian in a steel cage match. And then there's actually uh, three bonus matches. And then it has some other extra stuff on there. But, yep, this was one of the uh, UK pay-per-views when they used to do those back in the day. Pretty happy to get this one back in the collection. Me and my brother used to watch this one a lot. And we both rather enjoyed it. So it's fun to get this one back in the collection. Too bad he's not home right now. We could watch it before I go, but oh well. And next I will do all the Blu-rays. Um, not too many Blu-rays this time around, um, but I did get some really good stuff in here, which we will get into right now. First up, I got Starship Troopers Invasion. Um, this is a CGI movie that came out a couple years ago now, uh, 2012, so it came out four years ago. Um, really enjoyed this though. I did rent this I think over the summer or towards the end of the summer. Um, but I really enjoyed this. Um, this was really the only thing besides the first Starship Troopers movie and the animated series that was really worth the shit. Uh, Starship Troopers 2 and 3 I thought were just lousy movies. Um, I mean they brought back Johnny Rico in 3 but he didn't do anything. And 2 was just a lousy movie. Um, just really, really cheaply made, and you can tell when you watch the movie. But this, I really enjoyed. I thought this was really well done. Casper uh, Van Deem was one of the producers on this, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. I was very surprised by it. It does have features, which is cool. It has an 11-part making-of documentary, deleted scenes, commentary, gag reel, and the Blu-ray exclusive is a art gallery. But... Yeah, I thought this was really cool. Um, hopefully I got a chance to sit down and watch it again uh, before I head off to boot camp because I love the franchise, Starship Troopers. I just wish they had made better movies after the first one. But I really like this. This was pretty cool. Next up, got a classic uh, movie in here. Uh, too bad the, one of the tabs on the Blu-ray case is broke, but I think I have extra cases downstairs. But I got Bullet with Steve McQueen on Blu-ray. I do have this on DVD. I think it's a great film. It's probably my favorite Steve McQueen movie. Of course, everybody remembers The Car Chase. But I found this on Blu-ray at Goodwill for 5 bucks. I figured, hey, why not? So somebody else will buy it. It has all the features from the DVD. Um, so there's no brand new features on here, which would have been nice. But classic movie. I don't mind having it on Blu-ray. I did get another Steve McQueen movie, which we'll show later. Um, this one's another classic. Um, very happy to get this one on Blu-ray. I don't know why they haven't released the second one yet. Um, but I found this at uh, Community Aid. This was like $5 as well on Blu-ray. But hey, it's $5. Um, it's Blu-ray. I don't have to pay shipping and stuff. So when I find them, you got to pick them up. You know, that's just my opinion. But... 48 Hours. Uh, love 48 Hours. Classic movie. I actually have not watched this in a long time. Um, it's been a very long time since I've seen this. Um, I did pick it up on VHS recently. I think it was in my VHS update that I just did. But I also picked it up on Blu-ray. 
because I figured why not. Uh, 48 Hours is definitely a classic. I definitely don't mind having it on uh, multiple formats. And like I said, I wish they would release the second movie on Blu-ray. Um, I know a lot of people don't like that one, but I do. And it would be nice to have it have both of them on Blu-ray as well. And same with Beverly Hills Cop 2. I think Beverly Hills Cop 2 is only on Blu-ray in the UK. I don't think it's ever come out on Blu-ray here in America, at least last time I looked. And I know 3 isn't. Um, but I wish that those films would get released on Blu-ray. Same with some other Eddie Murphy films. I think 48 Hours and Beverly Hills Cop are the only ones that are on Blu-ray. I don't know if uh, Trading Places or Coming to America or The Golden Child are. I think Trading Places might be. I'm not sure. But I don't think any of the other ones are. But hopefully soon, because I would like to get those on Blu-ray. I wouldn't mind having uh, the classic Eddie Murphy stuff in high definition. So, yep, 48 Hours great movie um, this is a more recent film this came out in 2013 so three years ago I know the sequel is getting ready to come out um, which I would like to see I don't know how it's gonna be I can only find out when I go to see the movie but really enjoyed this and this is a combo pack so I was happy I always like to pick these up but I got Olympus has fallen and it does have the slip cover which is nice I always like to get the slip covers when I pick up DVD or Blu-ray. I enjoy the slip covers. But Olympus Has Fallen. Really enjoyed this movie. Um, I got this at a uh, FYE in uh, Park City Mall, which is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I think I paid like $11 for it used. But I really wanted to get it. I was feeling down in the dumps that day. So it made me feel a little bit better. So, yep, Olympus Has Fallen. Great movie in my opinion. And I did really enjoy White House Down. I was very surprised by that movie as well. I'd like to pick that up at some point. Next up, uh, this is a movie that came out last year that I ended up really liking. Um, so I got the Blu-ray and also the Blu-ray 3D steelbook of Avengers Age of Ultron. This is the Ultron cover because I figured why not. I, I liked Ultron more than Vision in the movie. Um, I did sell the 3D copy and I also sold the digital copy. Um, so I did get some money back, which is cool, but yep, really enjoyed Age of Ultron, um, so I definitely don't mind having the steel book. And the last two Blu-rays, these are collections. Um, this one I got for free. I don't remember if I, if this was free because I sold something on eBay or I got a refund. It was one of the two, I don't remember, but I paid like seven, or I mean, it was like $7, but again, it was free. It didn't cost me anything out of pocket. So I got the uh, Stallone three-film collector set, which has First Blood, Copland, and Lockup. So, yep, I don't mind having these on Blu-ray. Um, they look pretty good, in my opinion. Um, again, this was for free, so I don't... Hey, it was free. Unfortunately, the, uh, like the seal or whatever is ripped off. But again, I have extra Blu-ray cases. The only problem is I need to find one with three uh, disc holders. But that's okay. I'm sure I can find them somewhere. So, got First Blood. Lockup, which has more features than the DVD, which is cool. And then also Copland, which is the special edition DVD. The same thing that I have on DVD. But I will be keeping all my DVDs because uh, Copland... And Lock Up are great movies. I love them. And First Blood, I have the older DVD. Um, I don't think all the features are on this Blu-ray. Um, I know that this Blu-ray has the Stallone commentary and the original ending and the, the few deleted scenes that are on there. So um, that's when the Ultimate Edition came out. So I got rid of the Ultimate Edition DVD and kept... Uh, and I got this on Blu-ray, so there we go. But yeah, for free, really can't complain. So that's the Stallone uh, three-film collector set. And they also, because this came out when Expendables 2 came out, they also released one for Arnold, but it only came out on Blu-ray in Canada. So I'd like to pick that up at some point just to have them. Plus, I really like that picture of Stallone. And these are great movies, and I didn't have them on Blu-ray, so there we go. And the best part was it was free. Now this one, um, I picked up at Target because this was the Target exclusive steelbook. Um, I don't mind having these on Blu-ray at all. I love these films to death. Definitely need no introduction. 
the Back to the Future trilogy, like I said, this was the uh, Target exclusive steel book. Um, and it also has the bonus disc from the uh, new set. But the movie discs are the previous Blu-ray releases. So, And I'm sure the quality is the same. I'm sure they're not remastered in 4K or anything like that. But these look really good on Blu-ray. I'm glad that they uh, treated the films with respect. Because with Blu-ray, you never know. Uh, again, I know people think Blu-ray is the best. But in my opinion, it's really not. Because a lot of movies don't get treated with respect on Blu-ray. Um, so I did pick this up at Target because, like I said, I really liked how it was a steel book. I was going to get the, um, I think it's called the Complete Adventures or something, which also had the cartoon. Um, but the cartoon was in the DVD format. It wasn't in the Blu-ray format, which I thought was kind of stupid. If you're doing a complete set, everything's in Blu-ray except the cartoon. I thought that was dumb. Um, so that's why I didn't pick that up. But I got this instead. And plus, I think this is cooler because it's a steel book. And it has all the new features from the, the new set that came out a few months ago. But, yep, and this was cheaper. So, there you go. But the Back to the Future trilogy on Blu-ray. Definitely don't mind having those. So, I have a, I ha I'm still keeping my DVD set because it's Back to the Future. But they look good on Blu-ray. Next up, I got two horror films. Um, now this is all DVDs. Oh, shit. Of course whatever these are all dvds um this one is a replacement copy because the previous one that i had um i got at one of the conventions i think one of the very first conventions i went to because i didn't have it on dvd and what happened was it would play till the end of the movie like the best part of the movie and then it would just not play anymore it would just get stuck so i got rid of that i think i traded it in it or something i know why would you do that well maybe it'll work for somebody else i don't know but found another copy for $3 at Goodwill, so I can't complain. Silver Bullet, uh, really enjoyed this movie. I think it's one of, uh, I would say it's one of my favorite Stephen King films. Um, it's got a really good cast. I know some of the werewolf effects look shitty, but I still enjoy the movie. I used to watch this a lot on TV when I was a kid. Um, always wanted to see it because Corey Haim is in it, who I miss a lot. And also you have Gary Busey. But really enjoy Silver Bullet, fun movie. So happy to get another copy in the collection. And it works. I watched it earlier. I was like, yay, it works. <laughs> this one, uh, finally got a hold of this movie. I've been wanting to get it for quite some time on DVD. But I think it's out of print. So people are going to pay, you know, more money for it. But I got it really cheap. I think I only paid like 10 bucks for it. But it is Trick or Treat. And this is the one from the 80s with obviously Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne on the cover. Although they're not... Like the stars of the movie, they just have small roles. But I think the back's pretty cool because you see like um, a couple of shots of like the crew like setting up and stuff, which is cool. But heard a lot of great things about this movie. I also recently picked up the soundtrack. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this, so I'm looking forward to sitting down and checking it out. I definitely will be watching it before I head off to boot camp. But um, yeah, looking forward to seeing this movie, Trick or Treat. Uh, the next three are like Disney movies, like family films. I mean, all three of them are Disney movies, but, you know, family, kid type of movies. Uh, first up, Angels in the Outfield. Always enjoyed this as a kid. Uh, my, it's always been one of my brother's favorites as well. Uh, found it at Community Aid for a couple dollars on DVD. Finally picked it up on DVD. I still have a VHS of it somewhere. Probably still going to keep that because it's Disney. But, yep, finally got a hold of this on DVD. Great film. Always liked it. This one I kind of screwed up on, but I got National Treasure. Um, I had the second film. I didn't have the first film. But they did another DVD which had more features, but I didn't know. And then I think the Blu-ray has all the features from all the DVDs. So um, if I ever find the Blu-ray, I'll probably pick it up and then get rid of this. Um, but this will be good for now. I do enjoy the National Treasure films. I know they were supposed to make a third one, but it never happened. I wish they kind of did before Nicolas Cage went fucking crazy. Um, it would have been cool to see a third National Treasure film. But I do enjoy the, uh, the two that we did get. So, yep, really happy to get this in the collection. Like I said, I know now that there's one with more features, but I didn't know when I bought it. But it was only a couple dollars. It's not like it was a huge investment. So there's that. And finally found this in widescreen, because I know... 
I think Walmart still has it out, but it's in full screen, so I kind of passed on it because I didn't want it in full screen. But I found this for a couple of dollars at Community Aid, eight below. So I have another Paul Walker movie in the collection. But I did really enjoy this film. It is based on a true story about these uh, sled dogs that they abandoned, and then they found their way home. They met with the people and found their way back. Um, so that's a pretty interesting story. And this actually has a commentary with Paul Walker, which, you know, is pretty cool. And then it has a making of. But really enjoyed this film. I did see it a while back, but I really liked it, so I definitely don't mind having it in the collection. It is a sad film uh, for many reasons, but definitely a good movie. So don't mind having that. The next three, these are like dramatic films or crime, more like crime films kind of, but... I uh, got this at the uh, the Family Dollar. Like I stopped into Family Dollar one day looking for a CD player, like a boombox, but they didn't. Every store I went to that day didn't have what I was looking for, of course. Um, but I did get a couple DVDs, and these were four dollars a piece. Uh, this one and the other ones that I got, you know, four dollars, brand new. You know, hey, why not? So I got. The uh, Usual Suspects, great film. Uh, didn't have it in the collection, but now I do. This is the special edition. Um, I know they've re-released it with different artwork, but it, each special edition has the same features. So, uh, great movie, great cast in it. Um, so, yeah, Usual Suspects. This one I got at FYE, used for like $4, because I had a, a coupon to use. It was like... Uh, half off or something like that but I got the collector's series exclusive director's cut of Sling Blade with Billy Bob Thornton which he did um, he won an Oscar for best screenplay so there you go and it was also nominated for best actor but he didn't win but he still won for the screenplay uh, great film this is a two disc set there is a bunch of features uh, including a commentary with Billy Bob Thornton so there you go uh, haven't seen this movie in a long time, but uh, looking forward to seeing it once again. And I got another Stallone film. Um, this one I didn't have. Found it for $3 at Community Aid, and that is Shade. Um, this is a movie where Stallone has a small role as a card player. Um, thought it was an interesting role for him. I did enjoy him and some of the other people in the movie. This movie has a pretty good cast. There is some features, there is a little bit of an interview with Stallone, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like this film, I thought it was pretty good. And again, it was cool to see Stallone play a card shark, you know, I thought that was interesting. So, yep, for a couple of dollars, why not, you know, for the collection. So there we go. Um, I guess I can talk about, no, nah, we'll hold off on those. Uh, these are comedy films. Kind of put them by genre and stuff, so a little bit different than what I used to do. But found this at Goodwill for a few dollars. Uh, this movie is definitely a classic. Finally got it in the collection, and that is the original Slapshot, which was the only good one. I know they made a couple sequels, but this was the only good one. It does come with this um, best of the decade slipcover, which I think is cool because it opens up and. You get, like, different stuff about the 70s in there when the movie came out. That's pretty cool. Um, it is a 25th anniversary special edition. It has a commentary with the Hanson Brothers, um, some other stuff in there. But classic film. Finally got it in the collection. Um, next up are two movies from these guys. Uh, the first one, they released the special edition... But it has most of the features that are on here, which isn't much. And I think it has a couple other ones. But again, like with National Treasure, I didn't know until later on. Um, so if I ever find the special edition really cheap, I'll pick it up. Because I only paid $3 for it. So again, it wasn't a huge investment, which is why I like excuse me, going to Goodwill and stuff like that. Because you never know what you're going to find. So, yeah, if I ever find the uh, special edition, because I don't think this is on... I, I know it's not on Blu-ray. Um, if there was a Blu-ray special edition, I would get that. But, uh, 
yeah, if I ever find it cheap, I'll pick it up. But it is, first up is uh, Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke, which was the first film that they did. Um, like I said, there are some features. There's a commentary with Cheech and the director, and then there's also deleted scenes. I think on that um, special edition DVD, there's the music video and then a couple other things, but it's not much. So if I ever find it cheap, I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. But if I find it for a reasonable price, I'll pick it up. But yeah, this was their first movie together. Classic film. And also, Still Smoking, which is another classic film. This one doesn't have any features. No, just the trailer. But yeah, these were the best ones, in my opinion, of Cheech and Chong. I know they made, I think, two or three other movies. I know they did um, Nice Dreams. Uh, the Corasian Brothers, and then I think they did one more movie as Cheech and Chong, and then they've, of course, done other stuff together. But these two were the best ones. These are good for now. If I ever find the other ones cheap, I'll pick them up for the collection. But like I said, these were the best ones, so there you go. Hey, it's Cheech. I'm here, but I'm not here, so leave a message. Classic stuff. Another classic movie that I did not own, but... Uh, went on eBay and found it. Got it for really cheap. I think it might have been... No, I think I paid full price for this one. But The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Did not have this one in the collection for some reason. Um, but went on eBay, got it for like $7. The reason why I paid $7, there was cheaper ones, but I wanted one with the, the insert. Because I like to collect the chapter inserts. But great film. I'm definitely going to watch this before I go. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But classic film, and I like Andrew Dice Clay. Um, there's a commentary by Rennie Harlan on here, a making of, and a music video. So there's some features, but I would like to see more. I don't know if they'll... They probably will never do one because Andrew Dice Clay is so controversial, but I love the guy, so I would like to see it. But it's the Dice Man. This is another one that I picked up at Family Dollar for $4, brand new. Uh, didn't have it in the collection. I figured 4 bucks, why not? So I picked up the Collector's Edition of City Slickers. A great movie. Um, there's some decent features on here. You get a commentary by the director, Billy Crystal and Daniel Stern, which is cool. And then there's a couple featurettes and some deleted scenes, which is awesome. But, yep, City Slickers is definitely a classic. Um, at some point I'll get two, but this one was definitely the better one. Um, but I'll pick up number two at some point. But the first one is definitely the best one, in my opinion. So Next up, this was a, um, a comedy film that was out of print for a very long time. And I know it used to go for crazy prices online. But I think I paid like, probably like seven or eight dollars for this. Probably cheaper, I just... Something like that. I know I paid less than ten dollars for it used, but I always like this film. I had it. I have a VHS of it, a screener copy, so I'm going to keep that because it's a screener copy. But I like the film. I thought it was pretty good. Has a good cast in it. So I got Dead Man on Campus. I found this at Fye used. Very happy to get this on DVD finally. It's in really nice shape too, so that's even better. But like I said, I paid, I know it was less than $10, but like I said, this used to go for crazy prices online. But I liked the film. It was cool to see uh, Mark Paul uh, Glossier play a stoner and, you know, pretty much Zach Morrison, but older and, you know, stuff like that. Or Zach Morris, not Zach Morrison. Zach Morrison is a guy I went to school with who's a douchebag. I don't know why I thought of him, but Zach Morris. But there we go. But yep, Dead Man on Campus. Great film that I like. Um, that was produced by MTV. This is another one that was produced by MTV. I found this for a couple dollars at uh, Community Aid. And it still has the chapter insert, which is nice. But I saw this film a long time ago on like HBO. And I liked it. So uh, I figured, hey, why not? It's got a good cast in it. Um, it's, a, it's more of a dark comedy, kind of like how Dead Man on Campus is. But um, I still like the film. And that's Election with Matthew Broderick and Reese Witherspoon. Also, uh, I think Chris Klein's in this from American Pie. Um, but I remember liking the film. Like I said, it's a dark comedy. Um, but dark comedies are good. I do enjoy dark comedies as well. And plus Matthew Broderick's in it, so I'll watch him in anything. I love that guy. 
And last, um, I did not have this one. I had the other movies in the franchise, but I did not have this one, which was the last one. Um, and I also need to pick up the TV show at some point. I don't have that on DVD. Um, maybe when I get back from boot camp, I'll, I'll buy it or something. I don't know. But I found this at Goodwill for $3, and it is Jackass 3. Um, this is the single disc edition. They did do a two disc, but I think the only difference is the two disc has the 3D version. Um, I think that's all that there is, because this one has um, both cuts of the movie, and then it also has deleted scenes, outtakes, and the MTV making of special. Um, but I think the two disc, the only difference is that it's in 3D, like the second disc is the 3D version or whatever, or maybe a digital copy, I don't know. But as far as I know, the features are the same. Um, I know it's on Blu-ray, so maybe if the Blu-ray has more features, I'll pick it up at some point. But just to see the movie, because I had never seen it before, for $3, not a bad deal. So if there's a better version out there, maybe one day I'll pick it up. Um, I also need to pick up Jackass 2.5 and 3.5 because I I was told because I remember some video I did it might have been my DVD collection the the last one I did I asked somebody I just asked whoever like what are the differences and people told me that it's just extra stuff they filmed so I'd have to pick those up as well so not completely done with the Jackass stuff um, I do love these guys I know they're not really together anymore um, but oh well but there was a lot of funny stuff in here. Like when they put uh, Bam in the snake pit and he was like crying and everything. Um, the thing with the tasers was pretty funny. Um, when Ryan Dunn and Steve-O were playing... Was that Steve-O? Yeah, I think it was Steve-O. When they were playing the music and the ram kept hitting them, that was funny. When Johnny Knoxville did the jet ski, that was pretty good. Um, the, the hand, like the shit with the hand was funny. Um, when they put Steve-O in the porta potty and launched them, that was hilarious. Um, I do feel bad, like, I don't like when they hit each other in the nuts for fun. I just, I don't like that kind of humor. I, I never have. I just, why, like, especially, like, if you're a guy and you're hitting another guy, you know how much that hurts. Why would you deliberately hit another dude in the balls just for the fun of it? I just, I never understood that. But there was some funny stuff on here, and when they, uh, I forget who it was, when they dressed up as the gorilla and they went in bands parents hotel room and shit that was hilarious but yeah jackass 3 really liked it um i was supposed to see it in theaters but it was really packed um and there was a lot of like like stoners and shit and i'm like no like we'll go see it another time but we never ended up seeing it in the theaters but oh well um so next up these are all action films action and sci-fi and oh my and all that um, this is the other Steve McQueen film that I picked up. This was his second to last film. So this was before The Hunter. The Hunter was his last film. But I found it for a couple dollars. Uh, Tom Horn, which is a western. Apparently it's based on a true story. Um, it says here that he was a bounty hunter. Steve McQueen starred and executive produced what would be his next to last film. A gritty, exciting recreation of... Uh, Horn's later day career in a turn of the century west where gentler ways supplanted the law of the gun and Horn would be un an unwitting vi victim of that change um, Yeah, I think he's like a bounty hunter or something and I think his he's going after the people that killed his parents something like that I, I remember I think I saw this once back in the day I'm not sure Yeah, I think this is the one where his parents get killed when he's a kid and he goes after them or something. So, but now I have it in the collection. Trying to finish up the Steve McQueen stuff. So, yeah, we'll see. This one I got for $3. This is a newer DVD. Um, this one has been released a couple times on DVD. So the quality of this is probably going to be the best one out of the different versions. Because I know Anchor Bay released it a couple times, but Anchor Bay... Anchor Bay was great back in the day, but they were also, they screwed up a lot too. But for a couple dollars, I figured why not. So I picked up Black Moon Rising. Never seen this film. I've heard a lot of good things. I know John Carpenter wrote the film. I don't know why he didn't direct it, but oh well. Um, no features on here. I know there's a VHS with features. So if I like the film, maybe I'll pick up the VHS. 
But Tommy Lee Jones and Linda Hamilton in the same movie, I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah, we'll see. And it was only $3, so why not? This one I picked up, I also picked up the TV series, which I'll show later, at the, not the same time, or around the same time, not the same day. Um, I always liked this franchise, because I've seen a few episodes of the TV show, and liked it. I don't think I've ever seen the movie. But it was five bucks, I figured why not. Um, so I picked up Alien Nation. Um, I've been wanting to see this for a good while. Like I said, um, I will show the TV series off in a little bit, but... I've seen a few episodes of the TV show. I liked it, so I wanted to check out the movie as well. Uh, there is a couple features on here. Uh, featurette, behind-the-scenes short, and the trailer. And it stars uh, James Caan in an action film, so that's pretty cool. So, yep, Alien Nation. Can't wait to uh, see that one. This one I got at uh, FYE along with Olympus Has Fallen and another DVD, which I'll talk about. Um had this on VHS, so I just upgraded, but One Good Cop with Michael Keaton. Really enjoyed this film. It was good to see Michael Keaton in this type of movie. Not really an action film, but I did really enjoy Michael Keaton's performance. Also, uh, I think Renee Russo is in this. It doesn't say, but I think she's in this. I think she plays his wife. And uh, Anthony LaPaglia is in it. He dies, though. But I thought this was a pretty good film, so I upgraded from my VHS to DVD. This one, uh, I see this movie all the time on DVD, but it was never this version because this is a uh, extended version, but it does have a couple extra features, so it's kind of like a special edition, I guess. But I found this Goodwill, $3, brand new, so can't complain, and that is Crimson Tide, and it still has the slipcover, which is nice. And yeah, this is the unrated extended edition, and then it also, like I said, has a few features, um, it has a uh, two featurettes. That's about it. But this is a great film. A uh, great Tony Scott film with a great cast. I mean, you have Denzel Washington, Gene Hackman, uh, James Gandolfini's in the film, Viggo Mortensen, Matt Craven, who was in a bunch of movies. Um, great film. So I hope to check this out before I go. It's been a while since I've seen it. I'd like to sit down and watch it again. But great movie. And for $3, brand new. Can't complain. Next up, I got a Sean Connery film. I recently picked this one up on VHS, but I found it at Goodwill for $3, brand new, so you can't complain. Um, and it is Just Cause. I saw this film over the summer. I actually really enjoyed it. I had never seen it before. Although, um, I would see this poster like in the video store and stuff when I was a kid. And plus, it's Sean Connery and Lawrence Fishburne. But I thought this was a pretty good film. I know that uh, it's kind of forgotten about. People don't really talk about it anymore. But I like it. It's got a good cast in the film. Brand new for $3. Can't go wrong. So that's Just Cause. And I'll keep the VHS for the collection. Why not? Finally got this on DVD. Um, I had, I think I still, yeah, the VHS is in the basement somewhere. Um, so I can get rid of that. But I really like this film. I remember when it came out. I saw it when it first came out on uh, VHS back in the day. Uh, 16 years ago, which is hard to believe, but really like this film. Finally got a hold of it because everywhere I went, it was just the generic version, and that's not the version I wanted. But three dollars, goodwill for the uh, collect or the signature selection. Um, I don't mind, and that is Gladiator. Really enjoy Gladiator. Um, I remember when Russell Crowe was the talk of the town, um, and he put out a bunch of good movies back in the day. But yeah, this is the two-disc edition with all the features, so that's why I picked this up. They did do a Director's Cut DVD, which is like three discs, and it has even more features, so I'd like to get that at some point. Um, but this is good for now. I finally got it on DVD. But Gladiator, really, always liked Gladiator. Always thought it was a really good movie. I got uh, two more Mel Gibson films for the collection. I'm still a fan of Mel Gibson. Um, I mean... I know in my Q&A, my last Q&A, someone asked me, like, what were my thoughts on Mel Gibson. I like his movies. I always thought he was a great actor. Um, personally, I don't know how he is. I've never met him. But all that shit that happened, you know, it kind of gave him a bad reputation. And I do kind of feel bad for Mel Gibson because 
you know, he was one of the biggest stars of all time. There's no doubt about that. You know, he was one of the biggest actors ever. Big, big actor, big star. And it is sad what happened. I mean, you know, he should have chose his words a little bit different. I'm not, um, you know, not saying what he did was okay because it wasn't okay. Um, you know, he should have chose his words different. He should have made better choices. But I do feel bad because here's a guy who was one of the biggest actors in the world and now nobody wants nothing to do with him. You know, it does kind of suck. But, I mean, if he does more movies, I'll probably watch him because I like him as an actor. But, I don't know. But I finally got a hold of Bird on a Wire. Um, found it at Goodwill for $3. So, the Goodwill that I go to, most of the DVDs are $3. The TV shows are a little bit more. Um, so, I should probably stop repeating myself on that. But, really enjoyed this fun movie. Um, I think I... I'd seen it long ago. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But, yep, finally got that in the collection. Been wanting to pick that up for a while. And also finally picked up The Patriot. This is the extended cut. Um, it does have all the features from the previous DVD. You know, the only difference is it's the uh, extended version. But great film. I remember watching this in school um, when I was a freshman in high school. And I'd seen it a couple times before. But I thought it was pretty cool how we watched it in school. But really good film. Finally glad to get it in the collection. We watched that my freshman year because we were talking about the Revolutionary War and everything. And then we also watched The Alamo, the remake of The Alamo. And I didn't think that was a bad movie. I think that movie gets shit on, but oh well. Now this last one for the action movies, and this is the last one for the movies anyway because the rest is all TV shows and stuff. Um, this is a collection. I got this at Walmart. I had seen an ad for it in this magazine that I get that sells DVDs. And I was like, cool. Um, if I ever find it, I'll pick it up. And I found it at Walmart. It was like nine bucks for eight movies. So that's not bad. Um, and it is called the Bulletproof Tough Guys of Action 8 Movie Collection. Um, so in this collection, we have Last Action Hero, Universal Soldier The Return, the Russian Specialist, Into the Sun, The Stone Killer with Charles Bronson, which is why I wanted to get it, Silent Rage with Chuck Norris, and Seamus and the Anderson tapes are on there, and that's what the back looks like. Now, like I said, the reason why I wanted to get this is because it has The Stone Killer with Charles Bronson. Uh, this is the first time The Stone Killer has been released on DVD in America, on an actual DVD. They did a DVD-R release a couple years ago, but I wanted it on an actual DVD, so that's why I got it. But come to find out, Silent Rage is in widescreen, the other DVD I have is not, and also Universal Soldier The Return is in widescreen. The DVD I have of that is not in widescreen. Uh, but all the other, all the films except The Stone Killer I had, what well, Stone Killer I had on DVD-R, but all the other ones I have. I have Last Action Hero on Blu-ray, DVD. I have all the other ones. But I wanted to pick this up because of the Stone Killer on DVD. And then when I got it, I was like looking on the back. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Silent Rage is in widescreen? Okay, that's cool. Uh, Universal Soldier The Return is in widescreen? Okay, that's cool. I don't mind. So, yeah, to get three movies in widescreen for a couple, for like nine bucks, not a big deal. Um... Last Action Hero, the other DVD I have is in full screen, but I do have it on Blu-ray, so that's in widescreen. Um, all the other ones were released, the other ones I have of them are in widescreen. Um, yeah, but I figured why not, you know, it's a good collection of movies in there. Um, Last Action Hero is my favorite Arnold film. Universal Soldier of the Return is great. Silent Rage is great. Uh, this Russian Specialist I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed Into the Sun. Stone Killer was good, and the other two films were good, Seamus and the Anderson tapes. So I figured why not for a couple dollars, nine bucks, you know. Not a bad deal. Now, if they ever release the Stone Killer and Silent Rage on Blu-ray, I'll probably get rid of this and get those on Blu-ray. Because Universal Soldier The Return is on Blu-ray, so that would be in widescreen. Um, but until then, this is good enough. So... So that's it for the movies. Um, I'm going to do music because there's only a couple like music DVDs and then I'll do the TV shows. So hopefully I can get it all done in one part. We'll see. Um, this is one I made. This is just the Van Halen concert I went to. Someone filmed it and put it up on YouTube. 
So I just ripped it off of YouTube and burned it to DVD. So there we go. This one I picked up at the Family Dollar with uh, Usual Suspects, City Slickers, and what was the other one? Usual Suspects, City Slickers. Shit, what was that other movie? I got four that day. Usual Suspects, City Slickers. I don't even remember. Oh well, and I got this one. This is a music DVD. Uh, this was supposed to be a Walmart exclusive, but I guess they uh, they bought a, a shipment of them or something. But this is ZZ Top live in Germany, which is like a CD case, which they do for a lot of music DVDs. But for four dollars, brand new. Who cares? Um, so this is from uh, Rock Palast, which is a rock. TV show in Germany where a lot of bands come on and they perform and stuff. Um, but this one is from 1980. This is right when uh, De Gueo came out, which was a big album for ZZ Top. It was the album that made them superstars. But a lot of great songs on here. Uh, I Thank You, Waiting for the Bus, Jesus Just Left Chicago, I'm Bad, I'm Nationwide, Heard It on the X, Fool for Your Stockings, Nasty Dogs and Funky Kings, which is my favorite ZZ Top song. Cheap Sunglasses, um, Arrested for Driving While Blind, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, Lagrange, uh, Dust My Broom, Jailhouse Rock, Tush, and uh, Just Got Paid. So, great stuff on there. I love ZZ Top. This is uh, one that I found at an antique mall when I got Alien Nation. But I got Stevie Ray Vaughan live at the El Macombo. Great concert. Too bad it's not complete. It's missing one song, but it is a great concert nonetheless. And then it also has an interview with the surviving band members from 1999. So that's an older interview, but but great show. This one I found at Community Aid. It is uh, Dave Matthews Band, the Central Park Concert. I like Dave Matthews. Uh, Warren Haynes from the Allman Brothers is on this DVD, so that's why I picked it up. He plays on... Uh, Cortez the Killer, Jimmy Thing, and I think, uh, what would you say? So there you go. But I like Dave Matthews. And I got another, well, two Kiss-related DVDs. This one I got at the Antique Mall near my house. Well, one of them, there's a couple. But this one is Rock the Nation Live. This is a pretty good DVD. Uh, this is the current incarnation of Kiss, so Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer are on there. I don't mind them being in the band, I just wish they wouldn't wear the makeup, because it's not their makeup. That's the only complaint I have. Uh, Kiss still sounds good. Um, I know they're supposed to do another album, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, I just don't like them wearing the makeup. It's the only problem I have. But this was a really good DVD. I've seen parts of it before. And this one I got at FYE when I got uh, Olympus Has Fallen and One Good Cop, and I got a couple CDs. Uh, really happy to find this because I've been wanting to pick it up for a while. And it is uh, Ace Fraley, Behind the Player. This is cool. Um, this basically has a little documentary about Ace Fraley, and then it has um, two lessons. He uh, shows you how to play uh, Cold Gin and Shock Me from when he was in Kiss. And then there's a couple uh, live clips from back in the day. And then uh, there's a couple interviews with some other musicians. John Five, who's in Rob Zombie. Uh, Matt Sorum, who was in Guns N' Roses. George Lynch from Dokken and Lynch Mob. Uh, Chris Weiss, who plays with Ace Fraley now. And then another guy named uh, Tommy uh, Klufetos. I don't know who he is. But um, there's some interviews with them. And then they jam on... Uh, Cold Gin and Shock Me. So pretty cool DVD and then it had some because this came out when Ace's album Anomaly came out so it has like a commercial for the album I think the EPK is on here um, so this was a really cool DVD. I, did, I was very happy to find this because I've been wanting to get it for a while but yep, finally got that one alright, now the rest is all TV shows so I'm going to try to get through these as quick as possible, try to make this an hour or less Hopefully the battery stays with us. Um, I'm gonna not like speed through it, but I, you know, want to try to finish this up quickly. 
This is all live action TV shows and the rest will be cartoons. First up, I got a bunch of Doctor Who DVDs. Um, these are ones that my friend um, sold to me because he, w he wanted to get rid of these because he wants to buy the UK versions because they're cheaper and, and stuff like that, which is fine. I mean, he passed these on to me, which is no big deal. Um, I did get a, a good assortment here. First up, we have a first Doctor story, which is uh, story number 10, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. So there we go. Two disc set. The receipt is still in here. <laughs> I guess he kept the receipt in here, but that's The Dalek Invasion of Earth. This one is a more recent one. This came out, I think, in 2014. No, 2013. Um, this was... They had, re they had found some of it, and they released it on Lost in Time, and then they found the rest of it, so they released a separate DVD. But this is story number 40 with Patrick Troughton, the second Doctor, the enemy of the world. So like I said, this one's a newer one because they had found all the episodes and everything. So, yeah, it's only one disc, but it is the complete story on there, which is great. And I know the Underwater Menace is supposed to come out in March. We'll see, because they've said that a hundred times with that one so far. So, I don't know what's going to happen with that one. But next up is four Tom Baker stories, which is funny, because he's the fourth Doctor. And he's my favorite. First up, story number 77. The Sontarian Experiment. I hope I'm saying these right. So there we go. And then we have my favorite Tom Baker serial. Story number 92. Horror of Fang Rock. And then we have story 104. Destiny of the Daleks. Some of these I have on VHS, but now I have them on DVD, which is great. And again, they were from a friend of mine, so I know they've been well kept. And I don't mind helping him out, so there we go. And then the last Tom Baker story that I have here, Story 116, Logo Polis. Again, I hope I'm saying all these correct for all you Whovians out there, fellow Whovians. Again, I know people are probably thinking, oh, you only like Doctor Who because it's cool. No, I used to watch Doctor Who when I was a kid. I used to watch it on Maryland Public Television, on PBS, when I was a little boy. Okay, I remember... Doctor Who is not new to me. I know what Doctor Who is. And the last one I got is Story 151 with Sylvester McCoy. And that is Dragonfire. So I have some pretty good ones here. Um, so Doctor Who, I'm not really in the rush to complete the collection. There's other things I would like to get first. Uh, I namely want to finish the new Doctor Who first since those are in season sets and everything. Um, I know Season 9 is getting ready to come out. So I'd like to get that at some point, uh, probably when I get back from boot camp. And then I'm still trying to get the steel book of season four because it's a steel book, and then we'll uh, or series four, excuse me, and then we'll go back and do the classic who because I know some of those fetch for crazy prices, but oh well. So that's it for Doctor Who. Um, next up, I got another season of Tales from the Dark Side. I'm trying to finish these up. Um, I know. BJ's had them for a while. I don't know if they still have them. I mean, I can't buy them now because I don't have any money to spend. And I'm getting ready to leave, so it's kind of pointless to get them now. But I found this at Goodwill for $5. Like I said, the TV shows are a little bit more depending on the discs. But I actually got the first season of Tales from the Dark Side. And all the discs are in really good shape, so I don't mind picking it up. But I have the first two seasons. Now I need to get three and four um, and I would really like to get a lot of these anthology shows, uh, stuff like The Outer Limits, Monsters, um, I have the original Twilight Zone, I, I really want to get the Twilight Zone from the 80s, and also the one with Forrest Whitaker, but all in due time, but yep, so I have Tales from the Dark Side Season 1, the only one I have complete is Tales from the Crypt, because that's my favorite, um, I still need to get the cartoon of Tales from the Crypt. On DVD. But anyway, I said earlier, um, got Alien Nation, the complete series, for 10 bucks. That was not bad. I got this at the Antique Mall. Um, the only thing I don't have for Alien Nation is uh, the TV movies. 
That's the only thing I don't have. But this is the complete series, all 22 episodes. Also has some features on here. So that is the complete series of Alien Nation. Just give me one moment. I gotta flip the uh, laser disc side. As I put it on the wrong setting, I just put it on uh, stop instead of flip. But oh well. But yeah, Alien Nation, like I said, cool show. I've seen a few episodes here and there. I think I have a couple on VHS that I inherited from somebody. But, yeah, it's a pretty cool show. Don't mind having that. And last but not least is all the cartoons. I like to save the cartoons for last. I know a lot of people are interested in those. But first up, this is an animated movie. Um, I'm not really the biggest fan of this franchise, but I do like this and the two other animated movies they did in the franchise. So I would like to pick the other two up at some point. I don't think I've seen this one. But it is The Hobbit. And this is, like I said, the animated movie. This is the old snapper case, which is why I got it. Um, like I said, I don't think I've ever seen this. I know I've seen The Lord of the Rings animated one. I remember renting that as a kid. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen The Hobbit. And I know I have never seen The Return of the King. Um, so I'd like to get those because, I, like I said, I enjoyed The Lord of the Rings one. And this was done by Rankin Bass, who did Thundercats and many animated series and all the Christmas specials and stuff. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this out. And, like I said, not the biggest fan of Lord of the Rings, but I like this. So, we'll see. Next up, I got this one for free. Um, I think I had sold some stuff on eBay or I refund or something. I've uh, been wanting to get this for a while. Finally got it. The shitty thing is there's no insert. But the Incredible Hulk DVD. Now this is the Hulk from the 90s. Which has Lou Ferrigno as the voice of the Hulk. Which is pretty cool. And this has the first four episodes. Um, I know the first two. It's a two-parter. It's called Return of the Beast. I'm not sure what the other two are called. But this is the only DVD we've gotten of this series. Again, I don't understand what the problem is, Disney. You release Fantastic Four. You release Iron Man. But you don't release the Hulk, and you don't release anything of Spider-Man. What is the problem? You had four opportunities to release the complete series. This came out when the first Hulk movie did. Instead of doing this, you should have just released the complete series. And then you had the Incredible Hulk. And then you had Avengers 1 and 2. And you had five Spider-Man movies, but yet no complete series DVDs for Spider-Man, or Spider-Man Unlimited, or Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. We just get random DVDs for Spider-Man and the Hulk. The fuck is going on, Disney? It makes money. It's Marvel. That's the only shit you're interested in. Sorry about the tangent there. But there is some features on here. Uh, there's an interview with Peter David, who was one of the writers. And then there's a bonus episode from the 1966 Hulk series. And that's not even on DVD either. But I do really enjoy this cartoon. I have the complete series on my hard drive. I just haven't burned it to DVD yet. I'm hoping maybe soon we'll get this and Spider-Man. Like, what the fuck? Seriously. Oh, well. But that's the Hulk. Sorry about the rant, folks. But that just pisses me off. I'm tired of downloading shit, and I'm tired of buying bootlegs. It gets old after a while. Speaking of Back to the Future, um, as I said... The Complete Adventure set only had this on DVD, so I figured, the hell with that, I'll just buy the Steelbook set from Target, and I'll buy this by itself, which is the Complete Animated Series for Back to the Future. Love this show, I used to watch it when I was a kid, um, not in the original run, because I wasn't even born yet, I, it was a year later I was born, but Foxbox used to show this, so I used to watch that, um, Someone was selling on eBay blank tapes with this and Ninja Turtles from Foxbox. And my phone was being stupid and I couldn't bid on it. And it made me mad because I really wanted them. But I love this show. Um, and this set was well done. I don't know why it took forever to come out, but it did. You get uh, the complete series on four discs. Each season is 13 episodes, so they're split into two discs a season, which is great. And then you also get some features. You get an interview with Bob Gale and the producer John Ludden, which I really enjoyed that interview. Um, then there's another set of interviews with the animators. And then you get storyboards and promotional like 
scans, like galleries and stuff. But the interview with Bob Gale, I really liked. Um, he talked about how it came about and stuff like that. Um, but I love this series. Finally, happy to get it on DVD. I'm still trying to get the last VHS tape. I have the laser disc. I'm keeping all those, though, because I love this series. I think it was one of the best ones based on a movie. Best cartoons based on a movie, anyway. But Back to the Future, the animated series, rules. Next up, I got pretty much the complete series of Ren and Stimpy. I know that I had gotten a VHS tape that I talked about, but Walmart had these on sale. Um, I think season one was $14, and the other two were 15 So a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but I figured, hey, they're brand new. They're from Walmart. They're legit. So I figured, why not? Um, so I got the first and second season. Um, the artwork looks a little, uh, like, photocopied, but I checked the discs and they're fine. I guess just that uh, printing of the artwork just turned out that way. But yeah, this has the complete first and second seasons. Um, and then it also has the band episode, Man's Best Friend, uh, featurette, commentaries, uh, pencil tests, and more. So, there you go. And then we have season three and a half-ish which has season three and the first half of season four, because season four was the longest, which was only, I think, 14 episodes. Like, the seasons aren't long at all. Um, this one has 11 commentary tracks. 11? Heh. <laughs> 11 commentary tracks. And then Ren and Stimpy on Ren and Stimpy. So there you go. So that's the back. And then we have season five and some more of four, which has the rest of season four and all of season five. Uh, 13 commentary tracks, and then again another Ren and Stimpy on Ren and Stimpy. So this is the complete original series. The only one I don't have is the Lost episodes, which those were the ones that came on Spike TV, and those were like the real, the really gross ones, and you know they made it for pretty much for adults. Um, I mean these were pretty much made for adults, but that was like completely for adults. Um, now the problem with these. Does anyone want to guess what the problem with these are? They're edited. Um, most of the episodes on here are edited. And it's the same thing with Beavis and Butthead. As a matter of fact, I believe these came out around the same time as Beavis and Butthead. The Mike Judge collections. Again, it's not anything bad. It's just shit that the creators themselves didn't like. So they changed it. It's not like it was when it was on, where the censors were like, you can't do that, and they had to cut it out. No, it's just shit that, um, what's the guy's name? John, uh, fuck, what is his name? John K. Uh, John Colonder, I think is his name. I think that's how you say his name. It's just shit that him and the other people didn't like, so they cut it out. You know, it, I, I just hate that shit. But I figured, why not? I love Ren and Stimpy. I wanted to get these. Been wanting to get them for a while. So I figured, why not? I'm going to try to get... There's a cheap copy of the Lost Episodes on eBay. So I'm going to try to get that before I go. That way I have pretty much everything. And before these came out, they released three Best Of DVDs like they did with Beavis and Butthead, Time Life, the same company. And those have all the, all the episodes on there, the original uncut versions. And I've seen them on torrent sites. So one day I will download all the ones that are edited and make my own set, like Beavis and Butthead. I have all the episodes uncut. Um, I sent a copy off to my buddy Matt, Rambo Rap for Life. I know he loves them, which is awesome. Um, some of those were still edited, so I had to go in and re-edit them myself for Beavis and Butthead. But for now, these are good until I download all the uncut episodes. But yeah, I just don't get why Paramount makes them do that. I don't know, or just I don't understand why they do that. It's just stupid. But, yep, that's it for Ren and Stimpy for now. Like I said, I want to get the Lost episodes, and I do want to get those Time Life DVDs since they are uncut. You know, it's so hard to get uncut episodes for some reason. So, I don't know. Next up, this was a Target exclusive when the third movie came out, and this is the only season that's on DVD. But you can find this on eBay really cheap. I think I paid like $11 plus sh or with shipping, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But I got season one of Men in Black. Really enjoyed this cartoon. I used to watch it back in the day. Um, I don't know why they haven't re-released this or released the whole series. That just doesn't make sense to me. 
But for now, season one, that's good enough. And I got some more Voltron. Um, first up, I got collection number one, which is the Blue Lion. Now this is the tin set because with this one and volume two, which I'll show next, they did the tin set and then they re-released them as a regular set. And I wanted the tin sets because they're nicer. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to open this up and stuff. I'm not even going to bother. So that's uh, collection one, which has the fur. I think each set has 15 episodes. And then Collection 2, which this is the hardest one to find in the, the metal case, but I have it now. So there's that one. And then I got Collection 8 C-Team. Um, this one I think I got for free, or I got really cheap. Um, I know it wasn't that expensive, but I, I think I might have got it for free, or, or partially for free because of eBay. But So that's Collection 8, that's the C-Voltron. So I have... Got one, two, and eight. I have six and seven, so I just need uh, three, four, and five, and I'll have all the Voltron, the original Voltron, that is. So, got a replacement copy of C uh, Simpsons uh, Season 15. This one I got brand new. Um, this one is in much nicer shape than the other one. I was able to trade the other one in, which was good. So I just wanted to show that off. So I have all the seasons of The Simpsons now. Next up, pick this up at the Antique Mall. That I usually go to. Um, the one, the other one doesn't sell DVDs. Like occasionally I'll find DVDs there, but it's mostly like actual antiques. But I got Volume One of Defenders of the Earth, which is a pretty cool show from the 80s. You have uh, Flash Gordon, uh, the Phantom, and Mandrake the Magician on there. Uh, volume Two is really hard to find because this is the original release from. Uh, BCI Eclipse, which I'll show some more BCI Eclipse stuff in a minute here. Um, but this one has features the Mill Creek set doesn't. So I'd like to get uh, Volume 2 at some point. And it does have art cards. But this one has interviews with the creators, um, commentaries, animated storyboards, the original pilot presentation, and more. So Volume 1, and I will show the, the art cards. There's number three and number four. I guess because they released also the original Flash Gordon cartoon from the 70s. I guess that's where one and two cards are. Because, well, yeah, there it is right there. So, yep. I'd like to get that at some point. Because I do like Flash Gordon. Uh, I do like the movie. Really enjoyed the movie with Sam Jones. Um, I remember the cartoon from the 90s. I don't know why that's not on DVD. Because it used to come on... Um, I think after Phantom 2040 or something like that. I know it was around the same time because they were done by the same company, I believe, or they're owned, they're owned by the same company. But, yep, Defenders of the Earth, Volume 1. I'll get number 2 at some point. But I really like these BCI Eclipse sets, which you'll see more now. First up, got this one really cheap. Um, this was the... Well, these are all the, the only ones I needed, but completed the collection for this, but I got He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special, which is the original one with the slipcover and the raised art. So this one has um, two documentaries, and then it has two of the art cards. So I actually watched this on Christmas Eve. Well, I tried to watch it because I fell asleep because I was really tired, but I really like this. This was cool. So. And I got it really cheap. It wasn't that much... Because I wanted this one because it has the art cards. So there's uh, number 5 card. I have all 16 now and number 6. And then I got, this was brand new. I think I paid like 15 bucks for this or something. But I got Season 1 Volume 2 of She-Ra, Princess of Power. So there we go. Oh, it's over here. And we got art card number five of eight and six of eight. So they, I know they did different art number cards and everything, but I think I have all of them except for like the exclusive ones, like the exclusive um, sort of power, whatever it is, 
sword in the stone or whatever it is. I can't remember what the hell it's called. The first episode of She-Ra, the pilot. And then I got season two of She-Ra. Now this one and the next DVD set I'm going to talk about, these are the hardest ones to get of the He-Man universe. This one I got in a lot. It was all of He-Man, the original series. I think all of Thundercats. And then it was, uh, no. It was all of He-Man. It was all of She-Ra. And it was a couple Thundercats volumes. And I paid $105 for that whole lot just to get this one. Because this one by itself is like $200. So it was cheaper. I mean, it was still expensive. But it was cheaper than paying another $100 just to get this one. And then I sold the other ones off. Didn't get much for them at FYE, but I just wanted to get rid of them. Now, the only bad thing is this set does not have the episode guide. So if by... Blind luck, I find it when I'm out and about. I'll buy it just to get the uh, the booklet and then sell it off. But here's card uh, seven and eight. Yeah, okay. she has eight cards. He-Man has 16. So, and again, excluding the exclusive stuff. The uh, Secret of the Sword, that's what it's called. I couldn't remember what it was called. That one, the online version had an exclusive... And the Best Buy release of the the new He Man, the uh, the remake or whatever He Man. I don't I don't know if you call it a remake with cartoons, but that one had exclusive cards as well. But anyway, this is season two of Shira, so I have all of Shira now. Like I said, paid a lot to get this, but oh well, it was better than paying two hundred dollars. And this one I also got brand new. Uh, this one's really hard to find as well, but I think I paid like fifty five for this. That was the most I was gonna pay. And it is volume two of the new adventures of He-Man. So I now have the complete series of He-Man and She-Ra. I have all of the original Masters of the Universe. I have the new adventures of He-Man. I have the remake or whatever you want to call it of He-Man. So I have everything now. I have the Christmas special. I have the best ofs because those had art cards. But yet my Masters of the Universe collection is pretty much complete. There's one... When Mill Creek got the rights, they did a set which came in Castle Grayskull, and it has the complete, both the complete series of Masters of the Universe and the the newer Masters of the Universe, and then it had the best of the New Adventures of He-Man, and then it came with like the sword and a CD soundtrack and stuff. Really nice set. I would like to get that at some point. Um, this one is card fifteen and card 16. Um, so, but that's not going to be for a while because, you know, I got all these. Um, the only ones that were expensive was this one. I paid like 55 for this. This one I got in the lot, which was $100 for the whole lot. And then season two of the original He-Man, that was 50 bucks for the whole season because those are harder to find. But didn't spend a whole hell of a lot of money to get those. So that's not a bad deal. And I think I paid like 30 for the new He-Man because that was the best or the uh, Sam's Club exclusive or something because that had the last piece of the mural. But that is it, folks. That is it for this DVD update. I did it in a little bit more than an hour, which is good. At least I didn't have to do multiple parts. Um, this will be, of course, the last update before I go. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.